Hi everybody, I'm Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity and it is Friday, February 17th, 2017. Now, what a week we've had. I've personally been on the road a lot. Uh, I've been, as you know, I was down at NASA for a bit doing something with them and I got to talk to a wealth conference and uh, got to give uh, the entire crash course to uh, part of Glenn Beck's organization. All of that's just absolutely wonderful, giving lots of talks on the crash course. But here's the thing. The way I'm opening this now is I'm starting with a picture of a bumblebee. And the reason I do that is because I say, listen, here's a bumblebee. I'm going to tell you a story because people like stories. We all do. And I'm going to tell you this story about this bumblebee. And then I, you know, go through and I talk about energy, the economy, Federal Reserve stuff, money printing. What does that have to do with a bumblebee? Well, at the end of it, we find out that the bumblebee is now, the rusty patch bumblebee at least, is on the endangered species list. The bumblebee people. Please, stop. We can't be doing this anymore. Everything that you hear about from the current U.S. administration, the prior U.S. administration in France, in Germany, in Japan, in China, is that we have to get growth. We need growth. We need this economic growth. We need it. So they'll do anything, including throwing money into the markets and jamming the stock markets ever higher because growth. And um, the growth is killing us. And we know that now. And the thing, here's how, here's, how, here's, how, here's how you know how far off the reservation we've gotten. Okay, you ready for this one? There is a group, an organized lobbying group that has been fighting the inclusion of the bumblebee on the endangered species list. Can you guess who that is? It's the American Farm Bureau, a lobbying group ostensibly representing farmers is fighting the inclusion of the rusty patch bumblebee on the endangered species list because it would upset their operations, by which I mean they wouldn't be able to spray the pesticides they've been spraying, by which I mean specifically the neonicotinoid pesticides, which under the Obama administration, the EPA studied it and said, eh, we can't find anything wrong with these things. Whereas when Germany and France looked at that, immediately they banned them because they kill bees. So in this country, you know why we're confused about the effects of those pesticides on bees? Because people make money selling them. That's our religion. And this is how far off the reservation we are when the American Farm Bureau says, if we put the bumblebee on the endangered species list, our farmers might lose money. Well, let me be clear for all of you who maybe don't follow the outdoors as closely as other people do. If you lose the bumblebee, what else do you lose? Well, everything that gets pollinated by bumblebees, and they have a special type of pollination service. They do something called vibration pollination. They get on a flower and they do a little something with their wings and they create this vibrational pattern and there are certain flowers that can only be pollinated by bumblebees. Not honeybees and not hordes of migrant workers with little brushes, you know, and like they do in China now. They lost so many bees. They have people climbing apple trees with paint brushes and hand pollinate the flowers over there. Unless we want to go down that path, um, we'd better rethink this. And if we don't, here's what happens. Everything that had been pollinated by bumblebees will have to be hand pollinated or pollinated by other means, or we will lose them, as in forever. There are certain these plants are annuals if they either get pollinated and reproduce that year, or they go away. That's where we are in this story. And instead of talking about that, what we see are groups on the left and groups on the right fighting each other over things that I consider to be largely trivial, but still ultimately a signpost of where we are in this story. So I wrote that article two weeks ago called Fight Cage, and it talks about how we're being shocked, ecologically shocked. It is shocking and fills me with grief personally. It is shocking and grief-inducing to think about losing the honeybee. It is shocking and grief-inducing to discover that it's harder and harder to live while the uber-wealthy get wealthier and wealthier because the Federal Reserve is busy making that happen. The central banks of Europe and Japan and the United States are busy making sure that the already too wealthy in this world become even wealthier, and they don't care about bees, and they don't care about you. And this is the world we live in. So this is what we need to talk about. 
Now, I've just written a brand new two-parter. It's up on the site this week, and here I'm talking about both the Oroville Dam, which is a, a emblematic and symptomatic story about decay of infrastructure in the United States. This is a major dam, the one of the 20th largest in the world, and we almost lost it because it rained, which it does, I hear, and dams are supposed to deal with that, but we hadn't maintained it. Five, six million bucks of maintenance had been deferred. We couldn't find money for it. And that short-sighted thinking is the same short-sighted thinking that we have in the bees and the same short-sighted thinking that leads us to create these enormous wealth gaps in the world. So we have an article about that. And in particular, in that one, I am talking about the big financial reset that we all know is coming. It's part of the reason we're feeling a little uncomfortable and part of the reason people are feeling shocked is because these, uh, this big reset's coming. I don't know if it's this year or next year, but we can all feel it. It's certainly coming. So take a look at that. And as well, like, what do we do with all this crazy information, right? What do we do with it? Well, there are no easy answers, but we hold a seminar at Roe every year. And this year, the seminar is from April 6th to April 9th. I believe that's from a Thursday through a Sunday at Roe Conference Center. You can come to peakprosperity.com and you can look at the link we've got for that. Click on that, register if you want to come. Uh, limited seating, limited spaces. It's a fantastic event every year, but we wrestle with these exact issues. Not the grief so much around all this stuff. We, we acknowledge that and we move on, but what can we do as individuals? How do we become the change we wish to see? How do we motivate others and inspire others through our own acts of kindness and presence? So that's what this year's seminar is really going to be about. You want a fuller description, please come again to peakprosperity.com. Check out both the articles I've written, the other material on our site, and the seminar that we're going to be holding in row this year in April. So that's coming right up. With that, I'll check out for now, and that's your weekly update. I'll talk to you next week.